السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد So continuing with Kitab Al-Tawheed, Sharh Al-Mujaz, Al-Mumahad, Li-Tawheed Al-Khaliq, Al-Mumajjad, Al-Ladhi Al-Lafahu, Shaykh Al-Islam, Muhammad, Ya'ni Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah. So this is a concise and summarized explanation of Kitab Al-Tawheed. As authored by Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala over 200 years ago. We reach chapter number 45, and in some of your copies, it may be chapter number 46, possibly, but nevertheless, we have reached this stage which is now actually towards the final stretch of the book. And the chapter heading of Kitab al-Tawheed with the explanation of Shaykh al-Allama Ahmed bin Yahya al-Najmi rahimahullah Bab At-Tasammi bi qadai al-Qudat wa nahwihi The chapter heading to be named with the name the judge of judges Qadi al-Qudat and that which is similar to it So he mentions the statement or the chapter of Shaykh al-Islam as, as authored by him that he said that in the Sahih from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he said that indeed the most lowly and awful names that a man can name himself with in the sight of Allah is Malik al-Amlak is to call himself the king of kings la malika illa Allah whilst there is no true king except for Allah the hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim the hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim And he said that Sufyan rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned also and likewise the name Shahan Shah Shahan Shah and likewise given calling oneself Shahan Shah and likewise there is in the narration in, a, in another narration collected by Imam Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu said, the one who angers Allah the most on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and the most foul and wicked in his sight is this one. Which one? The one who calls himself and gives himself the title Malik Al-Amlak, the King of Kings. As for the explanation, then Shaykh Ahmed Al-Najmi, he mentioned... <coughs> That in this chapter, there is a dislike of calling oneself, meaning this is in the chapter heading of calling oneself, Qadi al-Qudat, the judge of judges. And likewise, calling oneself Malikul Muluk, the king of kings, or Malikul Amlak. When Allah subhanahu when it is known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the judge of judges. Meaning 
that he is the one who judges between them. And likewise, Malikul Muluk or Malikul Amlak, the one who calls himself the King of Kings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the king. Though, as for the usage of the title king, and that is established, the title king is established in the Quran, in the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُوا كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا he takes, that he mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here, as for the ship, this is of course Khidr, alayhi salam, explaining to Musa, alayhi salam, both of them prophets, one prophet explaining to the other as to why he scuppered the ship. So he said that I scuppered the ship, as for the ship, it belonged to the poor people. So I wish to damage it because there was a king after them who seized every ship by force. So he scuppered the ship deliberately so they could not go any further because he feared for them from the king. And of course also, even though it's not mentioned here, that Dawud alayhi salam, the prophet Dawud was a king. And Suleiman, his son, was a king. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was offered by Allah in a hadith which is sahih that he was offered by Allah to be a king. So that is something that is established. In the hadith of Jibreel, when Jibreel came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said that indeed Allah has asked you whether you choose to be a prophet king or a slave messenger. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I chose to be a slave messenger. So this is proof that the Prophet ﷺ was offered two types of nobility. Prophet king, like Dawud salam and his son Suleiman, or to be a slave messenger. And he chose to be a slave messenger. Abduhu wa Rasuluh. So the title itself, to say that Fulan is a king, is allowed. And of course this is a refutation that we remember used to hear from the takfiris and the khawarij right back in the early 90s. In the early 1990s that they even used to write articles saying that kingship is forbidden in Islam and kings aren't allowed and kings must be removed and Islam only accepts the khulafa or the khilafa and it does not accept kingships. And of course this is falsehood and it is a lie against the religion, and it, speak, and it is to speak about the deen of Allah without ilm. لا تقفو ما ليس لك به علم. Do not pursue of that which you have no knowledge. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established in the Quran that his prophets, they were kings, and they were given kingship. And likewise, the noble companion, رضي الله عنه, Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, the Khal of the Ummah, the, un the maternal uncle of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, since he was the brother of the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that makes him the maternal uncle, since his wives are the mothers of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Muawiyah was the king of this Ummah, the first of them, and the best of them. And no one after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Khulafa al-Rashidin excelled in the excellence of kingship more than Muawiyah radiallahu anhu after the Prophet sallallahu As before, As for before the Prophet sallallahu then we had prophets who were kings. The Prophet sallallahu was offered kingship. So as for the title of king, then it is allowed. It is not something that is considered to be haram. Naam. So we don't say that just because a ruler is a king, that therefore now what he has done is chosen to do something haram because kingship is something that is allowed. However, that which is best is what? Is khilafa. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that the khilafa, that nabuwa will remain in the ummah 
so long as Allah wills. And then it will be taken away. And then there will come a khilafah upon the manhaj of Nabuwa. There will come a caliphate upon the methodology of prophethood. And it will remain so long as Allah wishes. And that khilafah upon the manhaj of Nabuwa, of course, is that which Abu Bakr, followed by Umar, and then Uthman, and then Ali, and then Hassan, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, that they were the khulafa. The four that are well known to us, of course, are Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali. Then there was a period of time after Ali, when Hassan bin Ali ibn Abi Talib was the Khalifa of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the scholars, they mention, those who have recorded through authentic narrations, that he remained the Khalifa for six months. And then he abdicated in favor of Muawiyah to defend and to protect the Ummah from bloodshed and difficulties. So he abdicated and Muawiyah became the ruler by kingship. Then after Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, and he was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu and he was the scribe of the Prophet sallallahu and he was beloved to the Prophet sallallahu as he was beloved to Abu Bakr and Umar, who appointed him as the governor of Sham. This is Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. And to speak against him is to agree with the Rafida and to speak in favor of him and to mention about him radiallahu anhu that may Allah be pleased with him then that is a sign of the people of Sunnah. He was Qurayshi and he was of course as we have mentioned the brother-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then after him there was another king of great repute and great renown and that was of course Umar bin Abdul Aziz from Banu Umayyah who died in the year 102 after the Hijrah rahimahullahu ta'ala and he was an imam, a mujaddid. And the ulama, they say that the most complete of the revivers of the religion of the mujaddideen is Umar bin Abdul Aziz. On the basis that his tajdeed of the ummah, or his tajdeed rather of the religion, his revival of the religion was more complete than anyone else after him. Because Imam Shafi'i was a mujaddid. And there were many ulama from, that, from the time of the Prophet ﷺ till now who were known to be great revivers of the religion. And this is of course relating to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that Allah said, Allah's Messenger ﷺ said that Allah will, rise, will raise at the head of every generation, at the head of every century rather, that Allah will raise for this ummah a mujaddid. Will raise for this ummah one who will renew and revive this religion. So from them is Imam Shafi'i. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, La Shak, and also Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, and many others in between the two. But the best of them, after the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, is Umar bin Abdul Aziz. And he was a king of Banu Umayyah. And he was the most complete because he was an alim of the religion. He was a mufassir and a faqih. He was a mufti and he was the ruler. So his tajdeed actually, meaning his revival, was more complete than Imam Shafi'is and anyone else after them or after him on the basis that he could also revive jihad in the path of Allah and remove bid'ah because he was the ruler and he did so. And he was an alim and he commanded the scholars to write down the hadith and to collect the hadith of Allah's Messenger wasallam. He was from the shiyukh of Imam Zuhri rahimahullah and he commanded him to write down and to pen down the hadith of Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the issue of kingship as he has mentioned Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi so the title of calling oneself king if he is truly a leader of a country and a nation then that is something that is allowed however what is forbidden and what is warned against is that one calls himself he says Malikul Muluk or Malikul Amlak that someone says that he is the king of kings that is not allowed because this characteristic this sifa is not befitting except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is not permitted for anyone to name himself or to call himself the king of kings this sifa does not befit anyone except for Allah 
so no one is allowed to use it. And likewise, similar to that, is Qadi al Qudat, that one calls himself the judge of judges. Because Allah is the one who is the Qadi of the Qudat, that He is the one who is the judge of all the judges. It is Allah who deserves that. As for one calling himself the head of the judiciary, like a Ra'is al Qudat, then that is allowed. That is something that is allowed, and it, there is no harm in that. But call himself the judge of judges, meaning that he is a judge over all of the judges, that is not allowed. But him to say that he is making something restrictive and saying that he is the Ra'is of the Qudat, that he is the head of the, judici- of, of the judges, or of the jurists, for example, in such and such a country, then that is allowed. Then he mentions that perhaps it can be said that someone may ask, so what is the purpose of bringing this bab in Kitab Tawheed, this chapter heading in Kitab Tawheed? And Kitab Tawheed warns against shirk. So what is the purpose of this chapter in warning against shirk? So he, and, and also this book, it commands with Tawheed. So where is the connection with this chapter heading? and with shirk and with tawheed. So he says, فأقول, he said that this is a tashriq fit tasmiya. This is shirk and associating partners in names. That a person names himself king of kings. So this is to make himself comparable. He tries to make himself equal to Allah by using this name. For this reason, it is forbidden. And likewise, an analogy, a qiyas, can be made with judge of judges. Qadil Qudat. So it is not permissible for anyone to use these types of titles and name himself with these. Not judge of judges, not king of kings. Because these two names, by using these types of titles, a person makes himself equal to Allah in name. That he's trying to say that he is the judge of judges. For he is the king of kings. As for the kalima shahan shah, then this is, this means in the language of the Persians, king of kings. Shahan shah means king of kings in the language of the Persians. So it is not permissible to call someone shahan shah. It is an impermissible name. The next chapter, chapter number 46, Bab, Ihtiram asma illahi ta'ala وَتَغْيِيرُ الْإِسْمِ لِأَجْلِ ذَلِكِ The chapter to have respect for the names of Allah the Most High and the changing of one's name for that purpose. In respect and honor of Allah, that one honors and respects the names of Allah and because of that, that it is permissible to change one's name to maintain the respect of Allah. He mentions the hadith from Abu Shurayh that he kana yukna abul hakim that his kunya his appellation it was abul hakim the father uh, abul hakim meaning the, literally the father of the judge but here the intent here is meaning the one who is known for judgment abul hakim so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him after hearing that his kunya was Abu al-Hakam or Abu al-Hakam he said in inna Allah huwa al-Hakam that indeed Allah he is the judge wa ilayhi al-hukm and to him returns the judgment So Abu Shurayh who as he was known at that time Abu al-Hakam he said that indeed my people that indeed my people, that when they differ in an issue, they come to me. فَحَكَمْتُ بَيْنَهُمْ So I would judge between them. فَرَدِيَ كِلَا الْفَرِيقَيْنِ So I would judge between them, and both parties would be happy with my judgment. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, مَا أَحْسَنَ هَذَا How good that is. فَمَا لَكَ مِنَ الْوَلَدِ And do you have any children? 
He said, yes, I have Shurayh, and I have Muslim, and I have Abdullah, meaning that I have three children. Shurayh, Muslim, and Abdullah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, and who is the eldest of them? So I said to the Prophet ﷺ, Shurayh. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, فَأَنْتَ Abu Shurayh. Therefore, you are Abu Shurayh, reported by Abu Dawood and other than him. Sheikh Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that it is Sahih in a silsilatu sahiha. So, this hadith, of course, establishes for us, because the Sheikh actually doesn't mention it in his sharh, but I'll mention it to you anyway, that it is from the sunnah to give oneself a kunya. Even if one does not have children, by the way. What was the kunya of Aisha radiallahu anha? Anyone know? Um Abdullah. She was known as the mother of Abdullah. Did she have a son called Abdullah? No. So who was Abdullah then? The son of who? Hey, no. The son of Asma bint Abi Bakr. Abdullah ibn Zubair. Alright? So, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Aisha radiallahu anha, take the kunya of your, uh, of your nephew, meaning take, take yourself a kunya from your nephew, who was her nephew, Abdullah. So she was known as Um Abdullah. Additionally, if one does have children, then it is the custom that one takes the kunya of his eldest son. So here we have Shuraih, Muslim, and Abdullah. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't say just take one of them. He said, who is the eldest of them? He said, Shuraih. He said, in that case, you are Abu Shuraih. And the hadith is authentic. Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, rahimahullah, in explanation of this chapter, he said, in this hadith, we see the permissibility or the encouragement to change the name of one whose name resembles a name from the names of Allah. So this Abu Shuraih al-Khuzai, he came to the Prophet sallallahu and he was given, and he used to have the kunya, Abu al-Hakam. So the Prophet sallallahu said to him, indeed Allah is the one who is al-Hakam. He is the judge. And to him returns, he is the one, to him returns the judgment. So, when the, when the Prophet, then the Prophet Sallallahu he asked him regarding his children. So he informed him. So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he changed his name or his kunya to Abu Shuraih. So upon this, we, we ascertain that it is obligatory to have ihtiram or respect for the names of Allah the Most High and not to go beyond bounds with anything of resemblance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is from ihtiram, this is from respect that is wajib towards the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I say that from the names of Allah is al-hakmul adal, that he is the judge, the just, or the just judge. And Allah, the Most High, has said, in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدِعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْهِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ سَيُجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And to Allah belong the most beautiful names. So call upon Allah by way of them. And leave alone those who deviate the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For they shall be recompensed for that which they used to do, meaning Yawmul Qiyamah, that they'll be recompensed, meaning they'll be punished Yawmul Qiyamah for deviating the names of Allah. So then he mentioned Sheikh uh, Ahmed and Najmi Rahimahullah, he said, and it is permissible to share with the names of Allah in that for which there is permission from the texts, such as Malik, which is permissible to share that name with Allah. Why? Because there is idhan, there is permission in the texts. 
and that which is similar to it. So the general rule is that if there is a permissibility in the Quran and the Sunnah to use a name or to share a name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is named by, then it is permissible to use that, like Malik, Ra'uf, for example, and other than that, if there is text to show that. The next chapter, and we'll finish upon this chapter inshallah, which is chapter number 47, Bab, Man hazala bi shay'in fihi dhikrullahi, aw il Qur'an, aw il Rasul. Chapter regarding the one who makes fun of anything wherein Allah is mentioned, or makes fun of the Qur'an, or makes fun of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he mentions the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّمَا كُنَّ نَخُودُ وَنَلْعَبْ قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ The ayah, the meaning of which is and if you were to ask them about their joking they say Indeed, we were only chatting and playing. Say to them, O Prophet, was it in Allah and His ayat and His messenger that you were poking fun at? And likewise, he mentions from, from Ibn Umar and Muhammad bin Ka'ab and Zayd bin Aslam and Qatada and they entered various narrations into others. So this is a combination of narrations. That during the battle of Tabuk, the Aman, he, he said, he said, مَا رَأَيْنَا مِثْلَ قُرَّائِنَا هَأُولَاءِ The Aman, he said, during the battle of Tabuk, he said, we have never seen the likes of these reciters. That they are more greedy in filling their bellies. And no greater liars in speech. وَلَا أَجْبَنُوا in the liqai no more cowardly than them in the face of battle. And he intended by that Rasulullah wa ashabahu al qurra And he intended by that this man when he, when, he was, when he made this mockery he intended by that Allah's messenger and his companions who were the reciters of the Quran. So Awf bin Malik he said Kad you have lied. Rather, you are a munafiq. You are a hypocrite. And indeed, I shall, I shall inform the Prophet ﷺ about what you have said. So, Awf, عنه, he went to the Prophet ﷺ to inform him. And he found that the Prophet ﷺ had already been informed of that by way of revelation of the Qur'an. So the Prophet ﷺ already knew what had happened by revelation. So that man, he was already there. He had come to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ was on the back of his camel upon the saddle and he was riding والسلام, on the camel and the camel was walking. And the man, he was saying to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, إنما كنا نخود ونتحدث حديث الركب نقتأ بها عنا الطريق He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, indeed, we were just joking. We were just talking to, to while away and to pass away the time so, as the, so that the journey can be, can be shortened. So, Ibn Umar said, and it is as if 
I am looking at that man right now. Holding on to the belt of the saddle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is put around the camel. And I could see that the man was holding on to the belts of that saddle on the back of the camel of the Prophet sallallahu and his legs were dragging on the stones that were upon the ground. And he kept saying, إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوذُ وَنَلْعَبْ And he kept saying, Indeed, we were just joking and playing around. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, وَلَا إِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّا إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوذُ وَنَلْعَبْ قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَالرَّسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ And if you are to ask them, O Prophet, they will say to you, Indeed, we were just joking and we were playing. We were just talking and playing. So say to them, O Prophet, was it in Allah and His verses and in His Messenger that you were making fun of? And the Prophet ﷺ did not even look towards him. And he did not add anything to what he had recited here from the words of Allah. He did not add any other speech to it. Sheikh Ahmed bin Yahya al-Najmi rahimahullah, he said, and that which is taken from this hadith and from this chapter is the disbelief of the one who makes fun of anything that is connected to the dhikr, to the mention of Allah. Or who makes fun of the Qur'an or in the messenger and whomsoever makes fun in any of this then he is considered to have committed kufr kufran yukhrijuhu min al-milla the kufr that exits him from the religion and the man who was mocking he intended by his speech the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wal-iyadu billah and he intended by that his companions who were the reciters and indeed what you should know is that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in reality was the most brave and the most courageous of men he was the bravest and the most courageous of all men and the enemy, they would fear him when he would stare and he would come to them with his eyes reddened in battle. And when some of those alongside the Prophet ﷺ were overpowered by the enemy at the Battle of Hunayn, the Prophet ﷺ raced forth and pierced through their lines on the back of his mule against the enemy and he would call out sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I am the prophet and there is no denying and I am the offspring of Ibn Abdul Muttalib so this is what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say in battle and he would not shy away when meeting the enemy in battle because of his courage and his bravery and on the battle, at the, and at the battle of Uhud, he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he remained firm and resolute in heart and soul, strong, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, such that when they struck him in battle, his helmet was crushed upon his head, and they struck at his cheek and wounded him. And split open his cheek. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, How can they be successful? How can a people be successful who wound the face of their Prophet? And in a narration, that narration reported by Bukhari, and in a narration, how can a people prosper whilst they, whilst they soak the face of their Prophet? 
in blood and all he is doing is calling them to the worship of Allah. The hadith reported by Ibn Majah. Imam al-Bukhari reports from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that Allah's wrath has become severe upon those whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam killed in battle. Naam. And likewise, that Allah's anger has become severe upon those who caused the blood to soak the face of Allah's Messenger or the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reported by Muslim. Rather, an Imam Muslim, he reports from Anas ibn Malik that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that his incisors, his incisor teeth were broken at the battle of Uhud and his head was wounded and blood poured onto his face from the wound that was in his head. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, How can these people be successful? How can a people be successful who wound their Prophet and they break his incisor teeth? And all he does is call them to Allah. How can they be successful? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْعَمْرِ شَيْءٌ Not for you is the decision, O Muhammad. Meaning, Allah will decide who will be successful. Allah is the one who will decide who will prosper. It, the affair is not for you, O Muhammad. Alayhi salatu wassalam. Ibn Majah reports from Anas ibn Malik that when it was the day of Uhud, on the battle of Uhud, the incisors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam were broken and he received a head wound and the blood poured upon his face and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam started to wipe the blood from his face and he said, how can a people be successful who soak the face of their prophet with blood and all he does is call them to Allah? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٌ Not for you, O Muhammad, is the decision. Shaykh al-Albani authenticated it in Takhrij Fiqh al In the final two or, three, two or three paragraphs, he mentions Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi. And likewise, these Qurra that he abused and he made fun of, these reciters of the Quran from amongst the Sahaba, they were the utmost in terms of steadfastness and firmness upon the religion. And they remained steadfast at the battle. And the fighting against Musaylama al kadhab this individual who rose up to be a false prophet towards the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ and after his life, Musaylama al kadhab It was these reciters of the Qur'an that this hypocrite was mocking. They were the ones who stood firm with courage and bravery such that one of them he dug and buried his own feet and legs into the ground so that he would not flee from the battle. And from those reciters, on the day of the battle against Musaylama, that 500 of them were killed from the reciters, such that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum remained alive, that they feared that parts of the Qur'an itself would be lost by their death because they were the preservers of the Qur'an. He mentions what is important here is that the lie of this man was exposed clearly and openly. And that this shows his hypocrisy 
that he was carrying with him hypocrisy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم Make no excuse. You have disbelieved after your belief. إن نعف أن طائفة منكم نؤذب طائفة بأنهم كانوا مجرمين And if we pardon some of you, we will punish others from amongst you because they were sinning criminals. Surah Tawbah, Surah Tawbah, ayah number 66. This is the end of the ayah. قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ That's 65. The 66th ayah begins with this. لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ Make no excuse for what you have said. Indeed, you are disbelievers. You have become disbelievers after you believed. Sheikh Al-Fawzan, by the way, as a side point, he says that they weren't munafiqeen. They weren't munafiqeen. And the proof is in the ayah. Because Allah said, قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِمَانِكُمْ That you became disbelievers after your iman. Munafiqeen. Aslan have no iman, they are kuffar. But their kufr is hidden in their hearts. So they are not to be munafiqun, are not described with iman. They are not described with iman. So Shaykh al-Fawzan mentions here, therefore they were muslimin. And they fell into mockery of the sahaba radiallahu anhum and their recitation and their practice of their religion. And after their Islam, they became kuffar because of their mockery. And this is a proof. Sheikh Al-Fawzan mentions this is a proof that any Muslim, not just a kafir, kafir is kafir anyway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not, say about the, would not have said about the kuffar, قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِمَانِكُمْ Allah wouldn't say that about the kuffar. Who would he say that about? About Muslims who were Muslims and they mock the religion of Allah and by their mockery, they exit the fold of Islam. So mockery and istihza, meaning jesting and poking fun at the religion, after knowing that it is the religion, after he knows, this is deen of Allah that you are mocking, he says, Astaghfirullah, I didn't know. Then he is excused. He has excuse of jahl, udhr bil jahl. As for the one who is informed that this is the deen of Allah, like these individuals, they knew that they were mocking the ayat and they were mocking Rasulullah and they were mocking Allah and the signs of Allah and the verses of Allah and they carried on. So even when that sahabi told him, Kadhabt, you are liars and you are munafiqs, meaning that this is, that you are apparently showing iman but you have exited Islam. You are munafiqeen. So mocking the religion of, by a Muslim. If a Muslim was to mock the religion, he would leave the religion of Al-Islam. This is why he mentions, Shaykh, Shaykh Ahmed and Najmi in this final line, he mentions, it is a, so therefore it is obligatory upon every Muslim that he keeps away from falling into that which they fell into of mockery of the book of Allah or of the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. For indeed, in that lies destruction. You'll be destroyed. You'll be destroyed. Especially in this land where everything is a joke and mockery. Anything spiritual and religious. That's why Christians, they will mock their own prophet. If they mock the one that they revere, Isa, we love Isa, of course, Ibn Maryam, alayhi salam. They claim to love Isa, rather they claim to worship Isa. So they go to even excess and they worship him. Yet they make fun of him, they poke fun of him, they make images of him, they say evil things about him, about his mother, about his life. This is what they do. And they do not, of course, leave alone, therefore, Islam. Islam is even a greater mockery for them. But those Muslims who think that now that they are living in some sort of you know, open-minded, liberal society, that they also can partake in this mockery because they want to be like this kuffar. Those Muslims should fear Allah 
and fear the fact that they have exited the fold of Islam by their mockery of the religion. Those who do not mock the religion, but they allow the mockery of the religion. They say it is permissible to mock Muhammad and to mock Allah and to make cartoon images and so on. Then likewise they have fallen into kufr. They have fallen into kufr. Even though they don't do it themselves. But they allow it and they allow others to do it and they are happy that others are doing it. Not allowed, barakallahu feekum. Then he mentions a final point, the meaning of أَرْغَبُوا بَطُونًا That they are the most greedy in terms of their bellies. And this hypocrite, he described the Prophet ﷺ and his companions that they were people who used to eat much and fill their bellies. And this is by way of their dispraise. They are trying, trying to dispraise the Prophet and the companions. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa billah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from nifaq and from foolishness and buffoonery that you find many of the people falling into in this time. And they say we were only joking. And we mentioned the khutbah today earlier about joking. Any joke that includes a lie, any joke that includes that which is haram, is forbidden in the sharia. A person will lie, and when you say, Yahi, you'll just lie. He says, Yahi, I was only joking. See how they change the reality of a word. Or they change the word, and they think they've changed the reality. So when, you, when they are caught out, you say, Yahi, you're lying. He said, no, I'm joking. As if by changing the word lie to joke, change the reality. It doesn't change the reality. We don't joke by lying. Yes, you can have fun. You can laugh with your wife, with your children, with the brothers. But not by lying. Don't lie and then say, I was joking. Woe to the one who lies to make others laugh. O Kamaqala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Woe to the one who lies to make others laugh. So do not lie and then say, I was joking. Say the truth. Say, I was lying. And see how you feel about yourself. When you say, I am joking, when you lie, you've relieved yourself. You feel relief that I freed myself from the accusation of being a liar. But speak the truth. Don't say, I was joking. Say, I was lying. Now you've made a hukum upon yourself that you are a liar. Don't lie, barakallahu fi'an. Don't teach your children to lie. Don't teach your children to lie. And don't, tell pe- don't allow people to crack jokes that have within them lies. Don't do that, barakallahu feekum. Keep yourself safe from kadib. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you safe yawm al-qiyamah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa jazakumullahu khairan.